Hello students, myself Manatush Dey, your English helpline on the go. Today, I shall discuss a lesson from Famingo which is taught in CBSE curriculum of standard 12. A lesson under discussion today is Lost Spring, written by Anise Jung. Before we begin, let me throw some light on the theme of the story, uh, which will be followed by story sequence and recapitulation. So, let's begin. Uh, this series chapter is divided into two parts. The story deals with child labor accompanied with stark poverty and prevailing family traditions of occupation in some parts of India. The first part describes the plight of the poor rag pickers of Simapuri. The second part describes the miserable condition of the bangle makers of Firozabad. So let's begin. And uh, before we begin, and uh, let me throw uh, some light on the characters. There are three characters in this story: Sahib, which is uh, who is a rag picker from Simapuri, Delhi; Mukesh, a boy belonging to a family of bangle makers in Firozabad; and the narrator herself. She is a social worker who empathizes with the slum children and honestly portrays their pitiable lives. So now let's begin with the story sequence. Um, Every morning, the author meets a boy called Sahib and his friends scrounging for gold. Scrounging means looking desperately, searching for gold in the garbage dumps of our neighborhood. Uh, uh, dear students here, gold is a metaphor for money, coins for the slum children. Sahib and his family hail from Bangladesh, but they have left their home a long time ago. Storms washed away their fields and homes, leaving them in a state of abject poverty. That is why they came to this city looking for gold. Gold here is a metaphor for money. Now let's move on to the next uh, part of the uh, story. The author asks Saif why he does go to school. The boy replies that there is no school in the neighborhood. The author makes a fake promise to open a school. When the boy asks he, her if she has opened a school, the author feels embarrassed at, at having made a false promise which was not meant to be fulfilled. On being asked his name, the author notices the irony in Sahib's name. Sahib -e Alam, which means Lord of the Universe. But ironically, the boy is a poor boy. Moving across the country, the author has seen many children walk barefoot. One of the explanations is that it is a tradition and not lack of money. The author wonders if this is just an excuse to explain away a perpetual state of poverty. The author's acquaintances with the barefoot rag pickers takes her to Simapuri. Simapuri is a place on the periphery of Delhi. The place is a home to 10,000 other shoeless rag pickers like Sahib. They are all Bangladeshi refugees who came here back in 1971. They live in very poor conditions, in mud structures with roofs of tin and uh, tarpaulin. The rack pickers have lived here for the past 30 years, some even more without identity, yet they have valid ration cards. They prefer to live here rather than in the fields at home, at home that is in Bangladesh, which give them no grain. Arvej is gold to these rag pickers. It is their only source of family income. Sahib tells the author that sometimes he finds a rupee, even a 10 rupee in the garbage. For parents, it is the source of their livelihood, providing them with food and shelter. For children, it is wrapped in wonder. That is why probably the writer has used uh, the word gold for garbage uh, to mean uh, that, you know, uh, garbage for children is gold to them. One morning, the author 
sees Saheb on his way to the milk booth. He is carrying a steel canister. He informs the author that now he works at the tea stall and is paid 800 rupees per month and all his meals. Okay. But the author feels that Sahib is not happy working at the tea stall. Why? Because according to the boy, the steel canister seems heavier than the plastic bag. When the boy was a rack picker, he was the lord of himself. Okay, he did not have any restriction. But whenever he is working in a tea stall, he has to work under somebody, thereby, thereby curtailing all his freedom of life. Therefore, the boy, even though he is working in tea stall, he is not happy. The bag was his own, but the canister belongs to the owner of the tea stall. Sahib is no longer his own master. Part of the story. This is about another boy called Mukesh. Mukesh wants to be his own master. So let's find out the story of Mukesh. In Firozabad, the author meets Mukesh, who insists on being his own master. He wishes to be a motor mechanic. The author feels that his dream is like a mirage amidst the dusty streets of Firozabad. Every second family in Firozabad is engaged in the family business of bangle making. Firozabad is the center of India's glass blowing industry, where generations after generations have been involved in this business. Children of Firozabad work in the glass furnaces with high temperatures in dingy cells without air and light. If the law against child labor is enforced, almost 20,000 children would be out of the hot furnaces where they work day in and day out, often losing the brightness of their eyes. Mukesh proudly announces that his house is being rebuilt. They walk down stinking lane choked with garbage past houses that are small and dirty constructions with wobbly doors and with no windows, where families of humans and animals coexist in a primitive state. Mukesh's father has toiled hard all his life, first as a tailor and then as a bangle maker. Still the poor fellow has been unable to renovate his house or send his two sons to school. Mukesh's grandfather, sorry, grandmother has seen her husband go blind with the dust from polishing the glass bangles. She believes in destiny. Can a God-given lineage over ever be broken? She says. In dark heart minds, next to the lines of flames of flickering well lamps, sit boys and girls with their fathers and mothers welding pieces of colorless glass into circles of bangles. Their eyes are more adjusted to this dark than the light outside. The author notices a young girl called Sabita in a drab pink dress, sitting beside an elderly woman, helping in making bangles. Her hands move like a machine. In a voice drained of joy, the old lady tells that the author that she has not enjoyed even one full meal in her entire lifetime. One wonders if Mukesh's father has achieved what many failed to achieve in their lifetime. He has a roof over his head. The author asks a group of young men to organize themselves in a cooperative. She learns the horrific truth that even if they get organized, they are taken to jail for doing something illegal and are beaten up. Therefore, there is no leader among them. The author finds two distinct worlds in Firozabad. One is exploited. Fa uh, an exploited family caught in a vortex of poverty 
and the stigma of the caste in which they were born. The other is vicious circle of those who exploit them. The sahukars, the middlemen, the politicians, the lawmakers, the policemen and the bureaucrats, uh, you know, they do something else uh, to do something else uh, on the part of this uh, slum people uh, mean to dare and daring is not a part of growing up in Firozabad. The author is filled with joy when she finds that Mukesh thinks differently. The boy is filled with hope. His dream of being a motor mechanic is still alive in his eyes. He is willing to dare. Writer ask Mukesh if he also dreams of flying a plane. Mukesh replies in the negative. He is satisfied to dream about driving a car. As few planes fly over Firozabad. Dear students, we have come to the end of this uh, lesson. Now let's recapitulate before we finally wind up. Uh, the first part of the story deals with a boy called Sahib. They are Bangladeshi refugees who came to uh, live in the outskirts of Delhi um, after 1971 war. Sahib is a metaphor for all the rag pickers of Simapuri uh, whose childhood is wasting. Uh, sorry, uh, Sahib is a metaphor for all the rag pickers of Simapuri whose childhood is wasted in looking for coins in garbages. The second part of the story deals with another boy called Mukesh who belongs to Firozabad and is born in a family of bangle making. The author feels empathetic towards both Sahib of Simapuri and Mukesh of Firozabad. Their childhood which is spring of their life is being wasted in rack picking and bangle making respectively. The author is filled with joy when he finds that Mukesh thinks differently. The boy is filled with hope of becoming a motor mechanic. So uh, she, she likes uh, you know, the fact that Mukesh thinks differently and wants to come uh, out of uh, his family tradition of uh, making bangles for generations together. Um, the writer in, the, uh, in this story has highlighted the ill effects of child labor, okay? When they, uh, they are in the spring phase of their life, they, their life is being wasted either in rack picking or in bangle making. So the ill effects of child labor has been highlighted by the writer in this uh, story. So, um, this is what the lesson is all about. I hope you understood. Uh, dear children, uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel so far, uh, kindly do subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon for notification of every new video that I upload for you. Uh, till I come up with another video for you, uh, take care and bye bye for now.